near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And join me today for my unboxing and my overview of the David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One Artist Edition from IDW. So let's go ahead and open this up together. And welcome back, everybody. A big thank you to IDW for sending us a copy of this artist edition. This is one of my most anticipated artist editions, my, my most anticipated collected editions this year. And I had the pleasure of interviewing Scott Doombeer to talk about some of the process here uh, towards the end of last year, or maybe it was the beginning of this year. But this is an unboxing. So I know that I had the book open already without the plastic, but that's just the way that I edit things. As long as you all know now, yeah, I am doing a unboxing. It's not a live unboxing, but it's an unboxing. So here we have the front of the box. There's really nothing special about it. It's just a cardboard box with the actual Mazzucchelli. I love the fact that they have that up there. Year one, artist edition, the ISBN, and then of course the retail price, $150. And the back of the box. I mean, it's just a cardboard box, but it comes in there because they need to keep your book snug and tight so it doesn't get any dents and like always there's another box to the outer box that retailers will get uh, but this is the way that retailers will be shipping the book out so here is the front of the book actually what am i even doing let's go ahead and get this open it does come sealed in plastic and then we can take a closer look at the book and let's just get it off of its plastic right here And there we go, outside of the plastic. Ugh. And that is, of course, the front of the book with Batman right there, Mazzucchelli. And then the spine of the book right here, making sure you can see the whole thing. And that is, of course, Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One Artist Edition. The DC logo and the IDW logo at the bottom. And then the back of the book, David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One Artist Edition. Whenever you go to websites like CheapGraphicNovels.com or WaltzComicShop.com or BDCosmos.com, this is the image that you'll see. Uh, it is the front and the back, but it's just so freaking iconic because I've read this book so many times. As a matter of fact, something I want to do really quick to give you an idea just how big this book is. Here it is compared to the size of an absolute or the absolute edition of Year One with the slipcase. And now out of the slipcase. So it is a huge book. And I'll do a little comparison here uh, in a bit. But what I want to do is go ahead and woo, crack that book open. And check out this book together with you all for the first time. So let's go ahead and start that. Alright. Let's go ahead and get this big book opened. Yes, that awesome cover is your end sheets here and the paper stock just like the other beautiful artist editions have this thick matte paper stock batman year one artist edition scott Doonbeer is the editor chip kid is the designer of the book and that's why you're getting zoomed in panels like this absolutely beautiful mazu kelly batman year one it is really interesting to see this book and not have like Frank Miller's name all over it. Because I think when most people that read the graphic novel or have read the original comics, they immediately think, oh, Frank Miller's year one, of course. But a lot of people, I don't know, maybe I'd like to think more people nowadays know that it was David Mazzucchelli's artwork on Batman year one that made so many of these iconic images. This is the copied from the cover of Detective Comics 353, July 1966 by Carmen Infantino and Joe Gella, right there. And about this edition, David Mazzucchelli's Batman Year One's Artist Edition is part of an ongoing series, one dedicated to showcasing extraordinary artists in a format as special as their work deserves. And this is a book you were never meant 
to see. Now, see, I haven't read the introduction. I swear, this is the first time I'm opening this up because I wanted to experience this with you all. I'm not going to go through each page, but now I kind of want to go and read this and then come back and film later. But uh, we'll see what it is. We'll see what this is. This is a piece right here. It is an introduction by David Mazzucchelli himself, written May of 2023. And we've known for a long time how how much they've been working on this book, how many scans they've been uh, trying to acquire for this particular book. At age of 25, preparing to draw a story that would redefine his origin, I asked myself, what does Batman look like? Oh, I can't wait to read that introduction. As you all know, I love... Oh my god, this is amazing. Uh, I love introductions almost as much as I enjoy looking at the actual work. So, of course, this is all going to be in black and white. And this is what they use for the cover right here. Batman Year One. This is the piece that was drawn in 97. And what they're doing with this book is, of course, making it look like the size of his pieces of art. So the images on this page and the upper left of the next page are reduced photocopies of partially inked pages. So it is before the inks right here. And you can see, you know, whenever you see the X's, remember when I was trying to break it into comics and I would see original art, I was always wondering what the X's were. And that's just to kind of fill it in with black, maybe Sharpies, maybe inks. And here we have the cover to Batman 404, the one that kicked it all off. Chapter one, who I am, how I come to be. He will become the greatest crime fighter the world has ever known. It won't be easy. And here we have it. This is the very big. It's so crazy to see it in black and white because I'm not sure if DC ever released the like a noir version. It makes sense, right, for a Batman year one to have a deluxe edition noir version, just a black and white. But what we're looking at here are the true pieces of art, the, even the things that have been like fixed later on in the lettering or in the artwork we're going to be seeing through here. Keep on flash in. I love these little notes too. Sometimes by the editor, sometimes by the artist. And what you're going to be seeing here is pretty much Batman Year One, what page it is, and the original piece right here. You can see the laddering. It's so crazy to think about days like this when everything was done manually because now, such an iconic picture. I want to compare it to the color here in a little bit, of course. Because um, everything is done digitally nowadays. People don't even have to be in the same town. And I know even back in the 60s and 70s, people were shipping off or original pencils to be inked overseas. And that's great and all, but I kind of miss this era of just being together and having the letter go in and fix some things up at the last minute, mainly due to an editor, of course, Selena's introduction, uh, due to an editor or maybe even the writer and artist. What is amazing about this collection is that this collects Batman 404 to 407. Batman Year One. This hardest edition has 144 pages. And it retails for $150. And what I mean by why that's crazy is because... Without looking at the Absolute Edition. The Absolute Edition, by the way, has two different versions of Batman Year One. The original colors and the new colors. Most of these collections and trade paperback and deluxe editions of Batman Year One are right around 144 pages, meaning the complete story of Batman Year One is collected in here. Every single iconic page is collected in this big artist edition. Plus, you get sketches, and I promise I'm not going to flip through the entirety of the book as much as I want to. Uh, but I did want to just kind of give you an idea of opening this book up for the first time, what the feeling is like. So these are the sketches and the layouts and uh, the pencils before they are inked or photocopies. That's what some artists did. And then the inks, of course, were added later to the actual piece of art. Oh, this is cool. That transparent page right there. That's, that is wicked. Batman year one, 405. Oh, that is really cool. And then, of course, this iconic image right here. Most of the time on these, they do tell you, like, the date that these particular pages were drawn on. Uh, but this is Batman Year One. I do find that funny that maybe at one time they messed up and put Year Two. Hey, I'd take that artist edition. 
love the little note here at the date right there april 4th so you get even some behind the scenes of what was happening during this time and look i'll be honest with you if you're new to my channel and i'm not flipping fast enough and i'm talking a lot that's just the way that i am i'm sure there are plenty of youtube channels that are doing just flippies i don't even know what the hell they're called uh flip throughs i wanted to just give you a quick commentary on just the art itself and how wonderful it is that i do know these iconic images but this is the first time i'm seeing the original art as it was drawn and when it comes to the artist edition which is why i love them so much is you learn to appreciate pieces like this so much more and i'll compare this piece uh this is from ish the second issue uh, 405 because you know the colors as wonderful as they are sometimes take away just this beautiful contrast right there or the amount of details that went over here like the bricks and the railing you don't appreciate things like that and honestly this is the way to do it. i remember this um this is the way to do it in a big format like this because doing this as a noir i don't think you would appreciate the details and the sketchiness and that amount of just lines that go each one articulated in a way to just make it blend in the blacks and the whites oh it this is beautiful i'm going to skip a little bit through here and get to some other issues by the way of course i don't know why i have to say this every time but just in case if you haven't read batman year one well you're in for some spoilers because this is batman year one every single page in an amazing format and the book itself, by the way, sewn binding. Again, 144 pages, which is the amount of pages you get out of most of the reprints of this particular story. That's the third story. And now we're getting into the final arc in here, which I'm sure most of you have read. Remove the red lines and Batman 407 right there. This meeting between Gordon and Sarah. Ah, Gordon. And then Batman coming to his own. I mean, Batman through here, of course, I'm like, this isn't a review of the story. I've talked about this many times. But he's still new. I mean, this is his first year. He's making mistakes. And so is Gordon. And you see their relationship build on that. And then, of course, the big cliffhanger. Yes, pages like this and that. Just to see the framing. For example, when it comes here, you know that the mood is set by the way that Commissioner Gordon is standing right there in front of the shadows uh, while over here his wife is not having a pleasant conversation on the phone. Then you have this amazing scene here with Catwoman. I've always been a fan of these two pages. Ah, Bruce. I don't think I've realized just how much detail there is to the backgrounds and how gritty and dirty Mazzucchelli made it look. He really did make Gotham City come alive, which really is the third character in this particular book. And then, of course, the finale right here, which full bleed on this page. And here's the extras right here. It's Batman Year One, soft cover edition. So you do get the art for the different uh, collections that have come out throughout the years. Oh, this is cool. Oh, this is from Who's Who, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Who's Who. Commissioner Gordon. And then this Batman piece, of course, blown up by Chip Kidd. And the biography on David Mazzucchelli. And this iconic image of Bruce holding the cow. And this right here. Oh, that is the piece. That is the frame. That That is what you use. And that's it. Okay, we didn't look at every page, but I do want to quickly do a comparison. Let's go back to issue 404 to do a quick comparison with the Absolute Edition that I have over here. And I'll be using the original colors because that's just the way that I remember them as a kid. All right, first things first, the cover, of course. You have to put the logo, so you need room for the logo. Uh, this is the year one Absolute Edition, which again has both of the coloring over here is it compare this is crazy because there is no caption box I, I really i thought there was when i was looking through here uh batman year one by frank miller and david mazzucchelli looks like they had taken it out right there and then let's look here at these 
first few images see how much the color just adds to the mood right it makes it even though it's dirty and gritty it looks a lot grittier and dirtier over here just because of the colors oh and if you're not familiar yes there are two versions in the same absolute slipcase so there's this version which is the way that you remember it uh, including the way the paper stock is printed feel has that like new uh, newspaper feel to it newsprint feel and then the new color version over here so both of these versions come in the same slip case so, but i didn't know if people knew that i like ahead of time but this is the new colors the original colors and i wanted to compare it of course to this the original colors also have like of course the mistakes that they made they couldn't clean up because we didn't have digital coloring back then uh, but here it is compared to this scene now what i wanted to do was come to pages like this that i love the contrast of black and white um, and even though they're using minimal color like this yellow tone right here i feel like it almost kind of takes away from the impact of this bat just crashing through this window i'm kind of glad i don't know who it was that made this call to leave the bat black and white instead of giving it color so that oh man that's awesome wanted to come back to this and just how much bigger this is compared to the absolute edition I, I i said that you know this would take away from the contrast here and and it does i mean there's nothing wrong with this this is the way that i remember it but you appreciate the details so much more over here and i get it these things are not for everybody right not everybody appreciates art you don't have to some people can't even tell uh the little amount of details i've, I've talked about this on my overviews of the marvel masterworks whenever they restore something new it's like going from Blu-ray to 4K or DVD to Blu-ray. You know, most people, like my wife, she couldn't notice details. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Most people that have a home theater system don't really notice details like that. But to me, I appreciate this so much. Just seeing it like this. Instead of like where the lighting is exactly and what is causing the lighting. Even the orange tones and stuff. This is just such a unique and wonderful look at the inside of what was going on in Mazzucchelli's brain when laying this out and, of course, inking it. And, oh my gosh, just right there, the wrinkles on the jeans, for some reason, pop out a lot more. And I'm not saying because it's bigger. Like, I didn't even notice this rip right here on this guy's shirt. I just thought it was like an elbow pad or something. It's very, very cool the way that this is compared to the way that I remember the book. And just a couple more pages, I promise. This is a lot of fun just to do a comparison right here. Which is so much clearer. It is so easy to follow his art. And honestly, this, the pieces here, even though I do remember the scene, seems like they're just blending into the background. Whereas here, they really stand out because he's using like different gray tones instead of just like a, a black Sharpie to ink these out. It's nice and I love this. Very simple but really focusing on the characters' faces, like the zoom in. This is this is the kind of art you would see in like storyboards, like movies. Not artsy type of movies, but just movie movies. Easy to follow sequential art. Yeah, I, I do love the fact that back then, you know, we were limited to colors that we could use in a comic. And let's look over here and adding so much more to this. Ah, this is supposed to be nighttime, so this is interesting to go with those purple skies again almost like it's part of the crisis on infinite earth's crossover pretty sure they did make it look like a blue in the new actually let's look at it so it's like a grayish blue to kind of give you that sense that it's nighttime and these have a different type of lighting there almost changing the mood a little bit which i think whenever you have digital colors you do have to try to make decisions but that is a lot easier to see than over here but Anyway, uh, okay, okay, well, I want one more. I wanted to look at the wrinkles over here. There we go. Like, that's so much more prominent, the little Mickey Mouse. And, of course, you notice the Mickey Mouse um, phone later on. But just the amount of details and the shadows on that face. And I wanted to come back to this because I've always been a big fan of this cover right here. So the way that it looks and then the way it was originally drawn he's just a master of contrast oh, that's wonderful and this of course right here but 
that's it. That's I wanted to give you a quick little flip through, and I'm sorry about my commentary. You can always put me on mute. Yeah, put me on mute. Uh, there is a limited edition, signed edition of this, and I think it has a different cover. And I'll leave the link to the IDW website where you can purchase that. And again, you get the rough sketches. You get the entirety of Batman Year One, which is almost unheard of when it comes to these artist editions. Um, whenever you're looking at like John Byrne's X-Men or Dave Cockrum's X-Men, they jump around all over the place. Jim Lee's X-Men. Uh, so it's really nice to have a complete story including all the extra goodies and, of course, some of the behind-the-scenes as to what was going on. But this was stunning. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to take it upstairs, and I'm going to read that introduction by David Mazzucchelli. What did he mean, the book that wasn't supposed to be? This is a book you were never meant to see. Okay, now I'm curious. That's it, everybody. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answer within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this book. And of course, the comparison to the Absolute Edition. If you have any questions, leave them down below. What other artist editions you want to see. And of course, there is a limited edition one that has a different cover. There's a signed edition. And I left the link in the description where you can get that from the IDW website. But that's it, everybody. If you have this, let me know your thoughts on this beautiful artist edition. Stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>